that's one of the reasons that it's um, in some ways a lot easier to say yes to becoming the next president is that we have so many great things going right now. I couldn't bear to have someone else come in and slow me down. Um, and so that's really why, it, you know, I, I was sort of driven to say yes, not because I ever wanted to be a president, because I really did not want to be a president. Um, but I just couldn't bear someone slowing me down because we have so many great initiatives going, like the retention initiative for our students, um, you know, and, and really the energy on campus this year is so positive that I just didn't want anyone to come in and muck it up. I'm not sleeping a great deal. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, I'm handling it with a sense of humour, you know, because, um, you know, life is not predictive. You know, you, you can't really predict what's going to happen to you in life. And I think, um, you know, this last 12 months has really shown me that, you know, going through cancer and all of those things that you don't expect and you never think is going to happen to you. Um, you kind of have to go with the flow and, and just, you know, not let anything really um, slow you down. You know, I kind of, I am, Australians are very laid back and it may just be my nature, but you know, things happen and they happen for a reason and you just go with them. Um, and so the transition for me and the changes that we've undergone and doing the two jobs does mean that my life is a little bit fuller, but it also means that my life is actually more exciting because I'm meeting new people and learning more about um, the community and our partners and their views on, on right state. And, you know, I have an opportunity to change the narrative. We have a lot of partners in, in the, the region. Uh, and Sinclair Community College is one of them. You know, they're one of our largest institutions. Actually, they've got, well, let's face it, they're the largest, you know, um, community college in the in this country, let alone the state. Um, and I think, you know, we had let our relationship rely on the fact that they were just there. And we were here and people normally came. I think we actually have to be proactive and we have to be an emphasis on the active in terms of making sure that those relationships stay strong and grow. Um, you know, the old build it and they will come scenario is not true for higher education in this day and age anymore. We actually have to actively pursue opportunities for our students. At the end of the day, you know, our students need to have something that's going to set them apart from others. You know, when you graduate with a degree, you are graduating with a degree in X. But what you did as an undergraduate is what sets you apart. Those experiences that you had are what sets you apart from those others that maybe at Ohio State they didn't have a chance to. So I want to give our students every advantage as they leave us to enter the workforce or to graduate school or whatever, or professional school, whatever they wish to do. I want to give them an advantage leaving us um, from the undergraduate degree that they're not necessarily gonna get anywhere else. There is probably a thousand projects that we could get going. Um, you know, but we've got it, the energy, we've got to focus. You know, that we could do a shotgun approach really and, and sort of, you know, scatter but we've got to focus. And I think the focus has to be on student success. It has to be on, you know, enrollment all the way through to graduation. And how do we provide our students with the most exceptional of academic experience while they're here? Um, so it has to be about student success. So that's re re enrollment, recruitment, enrollment, retention, and then telling the story about where our students go after they graduate. Um, my idea is I want to be able to look the governor in the eye and say, 82% of Wright State students stay right here. Let Tell me if the University of Miami students do that. You know, and I bet you probably can't. Um, so, you know, I want to be able to sell Wright State because it is a huge asset to the state of us. And I was a first generation student, you know. I didn't know anything about university. My parents didn't know anything about university. I didn't have any siblings that knew anything. So how do you map your way or find your way 
through the bureaucracy that we create and the barriers that we might confront. So, you know, helping students sort of guide them through is, is really what the retention initiative is all about. Because students are people first. So how do we look after the people side? Um, and that's really the, the new retention initiative is sort of around the people side. We kind of forget that. See you all these just these white young things that are coming indoors and sitting, you know, sitting there doing all your work and then disappearing. But really, you're people, and people have life, and life sometimes gets in the way. And so, how do we help you navigate through life? Um, you know, I want us to be known for a university, to be known as a university that puts its students first, that values them as human beings and has the best academic you know, experience that one can have. I keep coming back to that because that is foundationally what I truly want to be able to, to give to the, to the, to the students. Um, you know, the goal is I am sick of other people telling our story and I am really sick of hearing a negative story. It is time to change the narrative. There are so many great things that go on here at this institution and it is overshadowed by dark clouds that people insist on bringing forward time after time after time enough we need to shed the light we need to pull those clouds away and shed the light that this institution deserves um, and if I can do that then that will make me very happy you know, that is my biggest goal, is to change the narrative. Because I think we've allowed other people to tell the story long enough. Uh, and it has not been a good story. And right here, we have so many good stories. I really, really want to change the narrative for the right state. And I really think we can do that. But we have to all do it. You know, it can't just be me. It, you know, it, if, if I'm in the grocery line and somebody asks me, so how's right state going? Yeah, they, they really regret asking me that question because 20 minutes later I have, might have let them go on. You know, because I'm there telling them, well actually, did you know? And I'm telling them the stories. So we need to help ourselves out and start telling the positive right state story because there's enough out there to write several volumes of books. So big goal, but main goal because I want to attract students that are going to benefit from coming to Ryan's Bank. That's all it comes back to.